I'm Alex Paulton. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we talk about watch collecting and horology. Today, I've got a uh, video I put together from my visit at the uh, Zinn Factory. Uh, the Zinn Factory is in Frankfurt, Germany. And uh, I had an opportunity to go there and not only uh, see the facility, but uh, they had a, a limited uh, time exhibition celebrating their history and uh, the company's uh, legacy. So. We are going to have a separate video for the museum exhibit, or the the display exhibit. I'm going to do a separate video for that. And then I've also got a separate video where I'm going to show some of the latest watches from Zinn. Um, we've got this video, so you'll be able to ch check out my visit to the Zinn facility. And then um, we have a separate one, uh, for, like I said, for the exhibit. And I'll have a separate one for the watches. But today we're going to look at technology behind uh, Zinn watches, we got a chance to talk to a couple of the watchmakers responsible for things like uh, the casing, um, polishing and finishing tegmentation, and the oil filling for the dive watches, and uh, have a little demo on why that's important. So let's uh, go to the video. So we're here in what they call in German the Oberflächen Technik, right? Yeah. And that just means surface treatments, right? Surface treatment, right. <laughs> or refurbishing. So, Lars, um, what's your full name and title? Um, full name is Lars Eller. Mm -hmm. And your title is? Um, yeah, surface treatment. The boss. My the surface boss. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, um, when you think of surface treatments, when it comes to Zinn, I think of tegmentation and bead blasting, but also polishing, right? Right, right. So we have three different um, surfaces, polished surfaces, uh, brushed surfaces and bead blasted surfaces. Um, for newer models or for new watches, new watch cases and the special and hardening process, tegmenting, mm -hmm. tegmented watches. Um, but also uh, customer watches uh, yeah, for refurbishing. So when they send it in for service, you take care of the outside and put it like new again. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> but uh, only if the customer wants it. Oh, so if a customer says, I don't want you to polish it, you don't yeah. polish it. Yeah, okay. Well, because some people don't like yes. their stuff polished. I think um, most people uh, want um, the patina. We call it patina? The patina. Yeah. Patina. patina. Yeah. patina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, if the customer wants to refurbish, he gets well, you know, and that's interesting because some companies, Rolex, <coughs> if you if you send it to them, they do everything whether you yeah. want it or not. Yeah, that's 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 the reason, and the customer can choose. But we have customers, for example, um, with expeditions uh, in the Himalaya and a scratch at the mountain, and so on. And don't refurbish, don't polish this that's scratch. A <laughs> that's a memory. Yeah, so I understand. Now. Um, what's the big difference between tegmentation and regular bead blasting? Uh, the surface, um, the hardness of the surface, and um, um, they are resisted from scratches mm -hmm, mm -hmm. much more. Not every scratch or em every damage, uh, but very, very uh, resist uh, of, of scratches. Right, but I mean, what does the tegmentation do? due to the metal. It's a, a thermal um, a hardening process, but much more, I, it's a secret. So now we're in the uh, manufacturing area here, and I'm with uh, Felix Daman, and we've got it set up here to show what's done because due to German privacy laws, we can't really take a picture of the work floor because of the uh, people who are working there. But we've got a good representation here, right, Felix? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> so, how long have you been with the company, out of curiosity, Felix? Uh, for about five to six years now. Yeah. So, so how do you like working for uh, Zinn? Uh, I do enjoy it. Uh, it's a lot of fun to work for the company because I can work at different models, like different watch models. Yeah. What's your favorite watch model right now in, in the lineup, out of curiosity? Uh, at the moment, I think it's the 1739 which I'm wearing right the now. The dress piece, it's a really nice looking piece. Yes, I enjoy it very much because uh, I like to wear more dressy watches 
rather than some some like tool watches or something like that. We have many tool watches, and I like them as well, but I don't really like them on me. Understood. Well, you know, it is it is a bit of an irony, you know, the the, the company known for its tool watches, but then that's one of the beautiful things about Zinn is that they are known for their tool watches, but they make other watches. Yeah, that's correct. We we do have some watches uh, which are more dressy. Exact for example, the Finanzplatz. Yes, that's a really nice watch. Yeah, they are, I think they're the most known watches, which are more dressy, and uh, they are very durable as well, like our two watches. So that's kind of nice to have a dressy watch, which is, which is also durable. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's um, take the camera and zoom in on some of this stuff, and then you can tell us about what we're looking at, okay? Yeah, sure. So, Felix, uh, we've got a lot of parts here. What are we looking at? Um, yeah, we have dissembled two of our most used uh, movements for demonstration. So we have one movement on my right hand side, which is a classic chronograph movement. And on the left side, that's one of our classic movements for the watches with only three hands. So this is so on, on the viewer's right, this is the three handed movement. Oh yeah, correct. And this is Sorry. the chrono movement. Yes. Very cool. Um, which which chrono movement is this? The one that goes in the 104 or? Uh, I think know? this is in the 103. That should be a, yeah, that's the Valjoux 7750. Okay, so, oh, so this is Valjoux 7750? Yes. Very cool, which is a workhorse movement. It's in a lot of it pieces. It is. Yes, it is. And um, do you know that you know the model of this uh, movement off the th off the top of your head? Uh, yeah, that's a uh, twenty eight twenty four. So this is a, 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 now. Do you do you license or do you buy them and then rework them? Uh, we buy them and then some some of them we rework. It depends on which which watch they're supposed to go into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what? But yeah, seventy seven fifty chrono, twenty eight twenty four. Yeah, we used to use the ETA movements, but we are no longer allowed to use ETA movements. So mm -hmm. now we switch to the Silita movements. The Silita versions of the Yeah, movement. like S, uh, SW200 and the SW500, for example. Right, right, right. Got it. Um, was there anything else you wanted to talk about with these movements, the movement parts here? Uh, yeah, maybe you can say that's uh, like the basic movements like here. They have round about 100 to 120 parts. And these movements, they have around about 200 to 250 parts. So I think it's really interesting, though, that the 7750 has managed to survive for so long in the industry. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it is. And it's used by, by many companies and, and uh, in many watches, I think, because it's a very durable and um, movement and a movement that is good to work on. Like it's more or less easy to work on it. So very you can- Very well designed. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very well designed. You can fix a lot of, a lot of things. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> no problem. I can leave. Yeah. So here we have, so here we have some assembled movements. Uh, yes, we've assembled them to show how they look in, in that form and uh, this one here on the right hand side is the smaller movement which we just saw in the disassembled, uh -huh. disassembled version exactly and uh, the left one is the chrono movement. So this was the chrono movement disassembled that we saw and this was the three-hander movement disassembled exactly. that we saw. And then here are some other movements I'm gathering. Well this is an old Unitas uh, movement as well in there so you've got a lot of interesting movements that you're putting into yes. your pieces. Yes, we used to use that for our pocket watches. I don't think we built currently them. Currently use them. Yeah, we currently don't use them anymore, but yeah, still have them, of course. And um, well, and I assume that I assume that this is the movement you put in the UX models, the diver, the oil-filled diver models. Exactly, we put the quartz uh, watches. Most of our quartz watches are the the diver watches, the UX versions. Right, right, right. Models. Well, you're well known for you're well known for your diver watches. The yes, oil, we are. The oil <laughs> Very cool. So um, this would be pretty much the point of view from the watchmaker at their workstation, right? Yeah, we're normally a little bit closer to it, so we can see all the parts we're working on. But uh, yeah, that's that's the side we're working on. And it looks like you've got a piece in the time grapher, right? There's a 
There's a piece in the time grapher right there. Which model is that? Exactly. So that's, I think that's a 7750. And it's uh, just for demonstration, we assembled it and put it on the time grapher to show people what, uh, what the time grapher looks like and to explain how it works. Right. So you've, well, you're, you're within cost there. You're 4.7, 5.3 fast, 0.2, uh, oh, and 315 amplitude. That's a good amplitude. Yes, that is quite a good amplitude. It is quite good. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that I find really interesting about uh, Zinn um, is you have each of the watchmakers manufacture the whole movement themselves. You're not passing it around between stations, right? No, that's correct. Me as a watchmaker, I work on the watch all by myself. Like I do everything on the watch. I get the movement and then I uh, put on the, uh, the, the hands and what do you call it? The zipper black, the, zipper black the, the face. The face, yeah. So we put on the face of the watch and the hands, and then I um, maybe I have to do some work on the movement, like modify it to, um, depends on which model it goes into. And um, then I do everything which uh, includes the, what do you call it, the Gehäuse? The Gehäuse, the case. The case, sorry. <laughs> I can translate for you. Yeah, no all right. <laughs> <laughs> I like some of the important vocabulary. <laughs> so, yeah, I work on the case as well, and I take care of the watch to be clean. I take care of the watch that the movement is working uh, correctly. So, basically, everything that goes into the watch from the case to, over, uh, from the, to the hands and to the movement itself. Very so, cool. Yeah. What are we looking at here? This is the oil filling, uh, an example of the oil fill that you're putting into the uh, UXs, aren't you? Uh, that's right. Uh, we call it the hydro technology, which is quite specific and quite special because um, we ensure readability uh, at very low angel underwater. So normally you have these mirror, angles. very low angles, yeah. If you have the, normally you have this mirror effect and you can't see anything anymore at low angles underwater. And that uh, technology ensures completely readability from angry angle. And you can, what you can see here is on the on the left side, there's a hydro UX, uh, which is uh, filled like it comes when you when you buy this watch uh, with 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 oil. So the, the whole movement, the whole watch is completely full with oil. It's not just about uh, between the glass and and the dial. It, the whole movement, the whole watch is is, is filled with oil. And you see quite in comparison to the to the right one, which is just unfilled for um, demonstration purposes, to have this comp comparison. So this is unfilled, there's no oil inside, just normal air like in every normal watch. You can see the difference. So in, in terms of colorful crispiness and yeah, it looks quite flat and um, the effect of the mirroring effect we can uh, show you right now. Uh, if we put the, the cases underwater, then you can see what I mean. <laughs> to show you the effect, I would start to put these cases underwater. I start with the unfilled, just for demonstration purposes. Watch. And maybe you can't see anything I, anymore, yeah, right? You see the reflection, right? You were saying you, the mirror effect. Yeah, you see the mirroring effect. And this is the oil filled one. So you can see it. Dramatic difference. Dramatic difference, even from this very low angle. It's a dramatic, dramatic difference. You can really see the benefit of having the oil inside the watch. Yeah. So it's not just a parlor trick to look cool. So the, the, the combat diver from the, the, from the special department of the maritime divers mm -hmm. from the from the GSC-9, they are equipped, it belongs to the, of their equipment. The special operations. The special operations, right, uh, so they can rely, uh, yeah, when when every second counts and underwater, you have to uh, always... Uh, know what time it is. <laughs> you know what time it is, completely right. Very cool. Well, so we're here in the lab now, Marcus. Um, it's quite a nice. It's quite a nice lab. Yeah, that's uh, welcome to the lab laboratory. Uh, this is a nice microscope, isn't it? So <laughs> I wanted just to show you some uh, machines and some uh, instruments to validate and document on testing all the technologies. 
very cool. Now, you said you wanted to show me some specific technologies. So let's, go, let's go take a look. Yeah, let's go. Okay. So what you can see here is our AR dehumidifying technology, which ensures uh, almost to keep the movements dry, which is quite important, as you perhaps know, um, because it's not had nothing to do with water resistance or anything. Though if you push any button or using the crown, you can't avoid over the years that with the air, there comes some kind of uh, liquid inside uh, the, the case, and that's what we try to avoid. So what you can see here, this is the cross section of the little titanium capsule, which is inside the case, and it's screwed inside the case. It's made of titanium, and inside it's copper sulfate, which keeps the liquid and the case from frogging. So um, on the on this side, you can see this uh, little light blue or white point which is the copper sulfate and it's a crystal sapphire it's like a window like an indicator to show you the status of the the copper sulfate keeps uh, the liquid and the moisture from the case so this is quite old already because it's it's opened and it's uh, used for demonstration purposes but if it's completely dry the copper sulfate is clearly white and over the years if it's getting wetter and wetter it becomes more blue so light blue medium blue up to dark blue, maybe after five, six, seven years, it depends on the usage and the humidity and um, the temperature outside. And if you like, you can change the capsule. And the HR dehumidifying technology comes also with uh, two another very important parts, which are special seals also. And um, inside the case, it's not air, because where is air? When you have no air, you don't have any... any um, liquid in the air, so it comes with a special protective gas filling also. So that was a uh, short video on uh, some of the technologies that uh, Zinn is using to make its watches, its very special tool watches. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and uh, tell your friends. Have a great day.